going to talk about an issue which uh, I hope will become much, much better known over the next decade or two. I guess I feel a little as one might feel talking, let's say, 20 years ago uh, in, in, such a, uh, in, in such a setting about microcredit. And uh, people would probably have said, microcredit, what's that? Part of what I'm going to talk about, as you'll see in a moment, is what I call micro-ownership. Like micro-owning is at least as important as micro-borrowing. One fundamental fact, planet-wide, gross figure, is that uh, we have 1.2 billion people roughly on our planet who live on less than $1 a day. If you can imagine that, attempting to live on less than a dollar a day. Uh, and three quarters of them, about 900 million of them, live in the rural sector. Uh, they tend to be the poorest of the poor. And uh, they tend, in many cases, actually in most cases, to be landless. I'll use landless in the sense of meaning not having ownership or owner-like rights to land. So they include prominently the tenant farmers and the agricultural laborers who own no land uh, of their own. There have been a number of success stories in uh, the past uh, two generations in trying to deal with the, uh, with the land problem. We at, at the Rural Development Institute have dealt with these issues. We're now a group uh, essentially of 10 attorneys uh, with some professional staff uh, in India and uh, Indonesia who are economists or uh, rural sociologists as well. But uh, we have been working on these issues first in the precursor to RDI itself since 1967 under the umbrella of the University of Washington Law School and then under the RDI umbrella uh, since 1981, uh, uh, the, last quarter, the last quarter century, and worked in more than 40 countries. The, uh, the work that we've done ourselves on land reform issues began in, uh, in 1967 uh, in uh, South Vietnam. And through a uh, series of circumstances that I won't pause to uh, detail at the moment, we were finally able to get support both from the Nixon administration and from the Tiu government for a sweeping land the tillers program, which was carried out from 1970 to 1973. It gave one million families of erstwhile tenant farmers ownership of the land on which they had been tenants. Uh, actually, we've interviewed a number of the landlords subsequently, the former landlords, uh, asked them about their attitude towards the land reform, and they said, well, we grumbled a bit at the time, but now we're more than satisfied because we used the compensation that rece we received. We redeployed it into a range of enterprises that fared extremely well in the newly prosperous countryside. The recipients of the land had indeed over the 10 years after the reform, increased their production of rice by 60%. Their net income had increased uh, by about 150% as they diversified into higher value crops. Infant and child mortality plummeted, literacy uh, approached uh, 100%. Let me speak then briefly about another country that we're working in now extensively, that's India, 
which has the greatest single concentration of very poor people on the planet. As I noted, uh, landlessness is a better predictor of poverty in rural India than either caste or illiteracy. We started looking at very small house and garden holdings as they already existed for some of the otherwise landless uh, in India and also in Indonesia. And we found that those very small plots, let's say averaging three or 4,000 square feet, less than a tenth of an acre, uh, provided an enormous increment to the nutrition and income uh, of the families that held them, uh, and indeed to their status as well. Uh, putting this data and data of a similar kind that others had collected in a number of regions of the world together, we found uh, that a very persuasive case could be made to try to provide landless families, if not with full-size farms, which seemed impossible and had failed, uh, to provide them at least with house and garden plots of their own to which they would have title, which might average a tenth of an acre or a bit under a tenth of an acre. And that process is now seriously underway in the states of Karnataka uh, and West Bengal. A variant involving field plots is underway in Andhra Pradesh, and I'm about to go to India on Sunday where we hope uh, we will be going to conferences chaired by the chief ministers in each of the states of Bihar and Orissa, uh, where we think very likely, these are, these are follow-ups to earlier conferences, that those states as well will decide to undertake major programs of distribution of house and garden plots, to which I would apply the title micro-ownership. Uh, but I do think micro-owning over the next decade or two may well become a concept as prominent and as widely supported uh, as the idea of micro-lending. I can perhaps end my remarks uh, with a, uh, an appropriate, I think, quotation from the House, uh, the House report that accompanied the Millennium Challenge uh, Act leg legislation uh, two years ago, which was unanimously supported by all the Republicans and all the Democrats uh, on the House International Relations Committee. That language reads, quote, the committee believes that ownership by the poor of a plot of land at least sufficient to erect basic shelter and have a garden producing food and income is of fundamental importance for empowerment, livelihood, social stability, and the creation of wealth." Uh, unquote. Thank you.